Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got interesting science news on pre-earthquake signals, electrification of clouds by space weather, and the atmospheric impact of space hurricanes. But we also have a couple space weather notes, so let's begin with the last 24 hours on our star. Things were very quiet. Solar flaring remains low due to a lack of complex sunspots. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are quiet, but we may have a coronal hole stream arriving early next week. The primary thing that caught my attention the last day was a medium-sized filament that tore itself away from the corona and out into space. At least that's what it looked like, right? I was watching the coronagraphs and honestly, I don't see the eruption down in the southern hemisphere coming off the left side. I do not see it at all, and that's peculiar. But then, I also start focusing up north off the polar crown, and that's about the biggest stealth CME I have ever seen, biggest plasma filament structure I've ever seen, and the only such event I've ever seen like that coming off the polar region. Peculiar solar events here yesterday, not sure what to make of them just yet. But up next, we're giving a golf clap to the team actually trying to take the hundreds of papers on pre-seismic signals and make a prediction system for their local area. It's the part of India which shook during the Myanmar megaquake a couple weeks ago. Excellent use of the electromagnetic signals here as they are the most reliable seismic precursors. Up next, folks, I have no idea what it's doing in this particular publication. No clue at all. But chapter 27... They just decide to get violent against mainstream climatology and break down in vigorous detail how space weather impacts cloud formation and electrification. It's basically 30% of all solar climate forcing in the middle of a book largely about critical infrastructure and AI. Hilarious. And yeah, we'll take it. Lastly, on the article front, we are looking at the space hurricanes, the major particle precipitation-driven polar auroral outbreak during the quietest geomagnetic periods, showing how even when the sun isn't active, its particle forcing on the Earth is extreme. It has the ability to wildly impact the atmosphere below, just like a major solar storm aurora, and this blisters downward to the electric ionosphere and then spreads. This is how it hits the global electric circuit ceiling, and then transfers that energy down through the pressure cells, impacting clouds, precipitation, temperature, wind, lightning, and more. They're just giving away the whole game here. Folks, this coming week, we have astrophotography class and then Kings of Catastrophe weekend. Dr. August Dunning, retired from Caltech and NASA, is coming to help us all wrap our heads around the Earth disaster cycle, the solar micronova, and cosmology. Lots going on the remainder of the summer as well. Find your time to come see us, and it begins at ObserverRanch.com or by giving us a call. Old school. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.